tiny home on wheels. It's a 2006 IC bus and it's a FE300. And we call it the free roaming bus. So we kept the original doors, um, but for the lock on the outside, we just put it on a hinge. No, oh, it's locked right now, but. So we swing this over and lock, and um, we always make sure we lock it so that we don't get locked in by somebody. Um, then open. This is kind of our as seen on TV screen magnetic just to keep the bugs out and get us a little air on the inside. That's enough. Yeah. What really <laughs> helps with ventilation is all the bus windows and especially in the in the front half of our bus, front five windows, if we open up all of those ten windows, the wind will blow right through and, and yeah. it really helps. Good that's, cross that's where we really get a lot of ventilation. That and also the roof hat. Uh, we wanted it to be visible with driving, you know, and you can see through top to bottom. Um, and just convenience too. Um, as we were talking earlier, it was a five-month project. It, it's just time savings. Mm -hmm. We had a we had a list of must-haves, and we tackled those must-haves, and then we hit the road. So that's, that's the main reason. The main driver on the entrance was uh, just the look of it. We went with the white, and then with uh, the natural sealer, so no color on the wood. Um, I think it was a poplar that we used. Um, just picked mm -hmm. up poplar boards from um, the hardware store and uh, put a uh, water-based poly on it. And it's been working out pretty well. We had several mechanics in here and that kind of <laughs> dirtied, it, dirtied up a it up, but we tried to get it back to what it looked like before and yeah. it still needs some touch-ups, but uh, we're happy with it. It gives it a very light look. And the white is just like a, underneath is a rust block, like a black uh, metal primer coating. Yeah, and the, then the over it with... Is what we used on the steps. Um, they were actually in pretty good shape. Like I said, this is only a 2006, um, so it, it was from Indiana, but honestly, we didn't have a whole lot of rust on it. Even the, <laughs> even the gray rails underneath, there was really not that much rust, so we were lucky there. So one of the main um, features we were looking for when we bought the bus was that we wanted a front engine because we wanted garage space in the back. So with a front engine, the only thing that I'm regretting is that it's very, very loud. You know, if Mike and I sitting kitty corner to each other, we kind of have to shout. We were looking at insulating a little bit more, but even um, with all the mechanic work that we've had done, they probably would have gave us very dirty looks if it was any more enclosed than it already is. But, and then the heat coming off the engine too, we can really feel it on a hot day. Yep. The downside to a front engine. The upside was, like Erin said, the garage space in the back, which was, you'll see later. The cooling, I think a front engine cools more efficiently and then a rear engine. Um, so those are two important things for us. The drawback being the noise, but we get through it. Um, we try to only drive maybe a couple hours a day, so it's not like it's long trips. Um, we're, we're just kind of doing this slowly and traveling slowly. So. It's not a big deal. We can talk when we park. <laughs> this is an international DT 466 turbocharger. It's a wet sleeve engine. If worst case scenario we ever have to get it rebuilt, they can actually in frame it and just take the cylinder sleeves right out and, and rebuild the whole engine in frame. I was searching for this 466 and low mileage. It's this has uh, when we bought it, it had 84,000 miles on it. 87, so we put about 3,000 miles on it. A little bit over a month. We yeah. started January 23rd. Mm -hmm. We took off. This seat, it was really important for Michael that I had somewhere safe to be buckled in. He doesn't like me up and moving around if we're going through tight spaces or construction. So I needed a seat that I could be buckled into to be safe. We thought the, as close as we could get it to the front of the stairs as possible. So we hired a welder um, and he got it welded in. The seat came out of a Ford Transit van. Yeah, Craigslist find. Um, yeah. I think uh, 100 bucks, it was never used. It's a brand new brand new seat. The only drawback is it doesn't recline. Um, I didn't realize that until I had it in the back of the pickup truck on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's but, comfy enough. <laughs> like, like, like we said, we only drive a few hours max every day. So yeah. And it's tucked away too because if you see, we don't have much room here. We don't have much room to work with. If you bump it out anymore, you kind of take away from this front, uh, front hallway, entryway yeah. area. Um, so it, we really racked our brains on this for a long time. Mm -hmm. and this is what we came up with. It's working well so far. It does take, the drawback is it takes away from the couch area. Like if we wouldn't have needed a front passenger seat, we could have extended the couch way to the, you know, to the front stairs really. But 
you know, it's, a lot of these bus projects are uh, tr uh, just a, a trade-off situation. Um, you can you can have this, but you can't have this. You, you're limited on space. The walls of the bus are uh, two by four framing, and then two by two is going down to another two by four going across on the bottom, and then just Luan paneling that. And then what's inside is the pink foam board and uh, insulation, the wiring for the outlets and lights. Well, actually the light wiring is up top, but the outlet wiring is, is through that also. Uh, the lights are 110 with uh, LED bulbs in it. So they draw four watts an hour and we have three of them in here. We barely ever use these. Normally at night, we just have the one LED light bulb. <laughs> it kind of lights up our whole nighttime sitting area. That is something that's kind of interesting with this bus. Most of it is 110. We have three things that run off 12 volts. That is the toilet fan, the water pump, and the RV furnace. Um, so those three things run on 12 volt. Everything else is 110 off the inverter. With the kitchen, we wanted this bus to have a huge kitchen because I love to cook. We wanted it to be like a main focal point of this bus. So actually this whole kitchen is half the bus. It's a 10 window bus, this is five windows here. The components of the kitchen, I'll start on the countertop. These are maple boards that I got at Menards. We put them on top of a, a three quarter inch uh, plywood and glued them, then put the edging on it, and that's all it is, and, and a uh, water-based poly again. It comes in a, a green can, it's water-based poly. And I don't know, I just try to keep the chemicals down when I'm building uh, things like this. So. Especially on a countertop yeah. where food is gonna, sitting. Yeah, when you're gonna have food very close to it. I, I think I've read somewhere that all polys are safe when they're fully dry, but can't hurt to use a uh, <laughs> water-based poly. So the cabinets are from Lowe's? Yes. Lowe's stock white cabinets. Um, we just kind of measured, figured out, you know, we want a large um, cabinet for all of our uh, silverware and utensils, and then the bottom is all of our cookware. And then on the other side, we have a small area for just dishes and cups. We kind of only brought, you know, like two cups for each person. And then this is like our towel drawer. And under the sink is all of our cleaning stuff, all of the towels and cleaning products and garbage bags, garbage can. Um, and then the most common questions we get are about our oven. So our oven, after researching on eBay and Craigslist and looking around locally for vintage stoves or holiday oven, Magic Chef, all those things, I finally started just looking for old campers and asking if I could rip the oven out. So we found a guy locally um, a couple hours away who was redoing his 69 Shasta trailer and he was getting rid of the fridge and the oven so we took the oven. It was originally green and it's in great condition and we love it. Yeah, we didn't do anything other than just clean it and it's, it's like, it's just I mean, that's why we kept the dark browns away from the oven because mm -hmm. originally this was going to be a dark brown, the floor was going to be dark brown, but it just, it doesn't look as good with a bright green <laughs> oven. So we went very like light surfer vibes kind of thing. And um, as far as cookware and something I use just about every day, since we're on solar, there were a lot of things, plug-in things that I couldn't have. So I got a percolator, which I use every day for coffee or tea or just to boil water for oatmeal. Um, anything that's probably my most used besides just pots and pans, kitchen appliance. And when it comes time to doing dishes, uh, our sink does the job. We kind of do dishes every night or at the end of every day. We just put like a mat out here and let them dry and then put them away every day just to stay on top of them for the clutter. And because this is our only sink, so we're using this to wash our hands, brush our teeth at night, wash our face. Sometimes I wash my hair in it. Um, so it's, it's good to just keep clean and keep the bus tidy. I love to cook and um, that's why we built this kitchen as a, a mini chef's kitchen. And we tried to design it around a cook and so that's why we have so much counter space uh, it's such an important piece of this bus. Uh, and that's also why we have an a apartment size refrigerator too. Um, and it's been working great. That that oven and stove, that works just like it's brand new. It's, it's pretty crazy actually, since it's from 1969. So yeah, this is really meant to, to be a kitchen that's cooked in. And we do, we, we do mm -hmm. cook a lot in it. I say the majority of our meals. Uh, we do like to go out 
to the different restaurants and you know in the different areas so we were in El Paso not long ago and we had a lot of Mexican food and <laughs> when we were in Louisiana we had the Creoles and uh, the gumbo and so we, we like to try the local food but uh, at the end of the day we're gonna be on this bus for 10 months now and we need to cook our own food just to save money too. So. The flooring is a, is a vinyl flooring and it's tongue and groove and it's a floating floor so it's not glued down at all. Um, and it's working very great. The only thing that I have noticed about the floor is it does shrink and it does expand with the temperatures. And I, this is my first vinyl flooring that I installed. I've installed like laminates and hardwood flooring before. And I, I knew that they would um, expand and contract just because there's more material in them. But I wasn't really expecting this one to expand and contract as much as it actually does. There's only a few spots on the bus that you can actually see it. But uh, it, I have noticed it. It's very minor, but it's just one of those things to, you know, make sure you're not going right up to walls. And if it is floating, don't go right up to the walls. You leave some room for expansion. I don't Take. regret doing a floating yeah. floor at all. Yeah. I think it's working out great. Um, mm -hmm. And it I is, would, it, I would yeah. not do anything but a vinyl floor, to be completely honest with you. Either vinyl or some other, like, totally waterproof material. Cabinets first. Cabinets were in first. Mm -hmm. and None of this was in yet at that point, so we yeah. went all the way to the wall. Yeah. yeah, I think we started on this side and then worked our way when, when the couch was not there and the, the bench was not there. So, so there is flooring under these, under the couch and the bench. The walls were built, so mm. it's really just, uh, the flooring is under these two pieces and Walking not any, anything else. Yeah. I think it's just like, at least in houses too, I've, I've heard that debate and um, I've always heard that it's just the price of material. It's so you obviously use more material underneath the cabinets. I have no problem the way we did it and just went right up to the kitchen cabinet. It seems to be working out pretty well. I don't think I would have done it differently um, otherwise. One interesting part about our kitchen cabinets that I didn't talk about before was um, we actually cut the toe kicks off of these cabinets. Uh, they come with a three and a half inch toe kick, I believe, and it just covered up too much of the window. We didn't we didn't like that. The whole point of our design is to keep all of these windows and keep it very light and um, airy in here. So we, we cut like three inches off the toe kick. They, they do float a little bit, but, um, and we don't really miss it at all either. Like, it's better for me. Yeah, we're I'm not, short. <laughs> yeah, we're not the tallest people. Yeah. So it, it works out well, actually. No, but it shows no, a lot on the windows. windows yeah. yeah. Cause then it would have been up, you know, to here mm -hmm. about. And most space possible and same with the window up front like if we can we always pull into a spot so that you know if we don't have neighbors we've got the full front window let as much light in as possible and if we do need to cover it we just have like a little drop cloth that I hang up with little plastic hooks so with our front window we have like the little plastic command hooks that you would use for like Christmas lights and then I just cut little slits in my drop cloth and we just and I'll loop them in right under the front window, right up to the dash. Very, very basic, but it works really well. Yeah, and it still keeps the bus really open. So our original idea was, okay, well maybe we can do a track and cover the whole front, but that really cuts down on space in here. It makes it feel really small. I also bought a rolling shade that I was gonna install, but that was too big of a hassle, so we returned that, and a drop cloth that I had in my closet works just fine. Yeah, so we kept the original AC in the bus. There's one up here and also one in the back. It just seemed like too big of a, an asset of this bus to get rid of. It would have given us some more headroom, but we have Aaron's seat and the couch under it, so we, and we know it's there. We don't bump our head on it or anything. It doesn't really take up that much space. Um, so we're happy that we kept it. It's currently not running, or it doesn't kick out cool air right now. I think it just needs a shot of refrigerant. Um, the rear one does work, but we haven't really looked at it too much. Um, we've been in very mild weather. Um, it, we've been running the heater a lot, actually, at night, and we haven't needed the AC at all. Like I said before, once you have the five windows on each side open, actually only four on this side because the fridge covers one, but um, the four on here and then the five over here, you open them all up and the, the breeze blows right through. The furnace was a brand new Suburban furnace, 19,000 BTU, and that is actually wired. I put a switch in the bedroom so I don't have to get up out of bed if it gets cold at night. Um, you know how it is boondocking. So I can set the thermostat. The thermostat's actually over here on the side of the cabinet. I ran, ran the wires through the back of the uh, the cabinet and then the, the, the master switch to give power to the furnace 
that switch is actually right up uh, mm -hmm. beside the bed. And the reason I did that was, like I said, it, you can set the thermostat to say 50 degrees or, or 55 degrees. And if it gets real cold at night or, you know, you wake up at 7 a.m. ready to start your day, you don't want to get out of bed because it's so cold. All I have to do is flip that switch and it starts uh, kicking out some heat to warm up the bus. This has a, uh, unfortunately, our bus only has a 35-gallon fuel tank. It gets about 10 miles per gallon, so we can still get pretty far. But in, we, we carry about 15 gallons extra in the back just in case of it's emergency. Okay. But We're stopping a lot. <laughs> yeah, we stop a lot, but we don't go that far in the day. Yeah. So, it's so it's just a basic boxed-in frame with a hinge on the lid. Um, we flip it up, so it's just um, storage down. We keep all of our backpacks in there, crock pot, coolers, blankets, mm. hammocks. It works. Helmets. Yeah, motorcycle helmets, jackets. It's a ton of space once you actually open it up. I wish that it could extend a little bit, but honestly, I kind of ran out of cushion fabric. We have cushions um, from Mike's mom's old couch. So <laughs> the cushions only got us so far. It would be nice to extend because this drops down and then that cushion fills in and it can be one big seating area. So it'd be nice to have the person sitting on this end to have some leg room. But honestly, we haven't even dropped this down yet, so. I don't know that we miss the pullout at all. If we have one guest, they could sleep here. Two guests, I guess somebody's sleeping on the floor, but it works. Um, so like I said, the table drops down to one big seating area, and then actually inside of this bench is our little pop-up shower. So inside the bench is a utility sink, just an old laundry room utility sink. And then the hooks up there are for the shower curtains. So a great thing about keeping the original bus um, ceiling is that everything is magnetic, so we bought those little hooks um, off Amazon and we use them for everything. We hang our laundry from them, we hang towels to dry, we hang the shower curtain, we hang decorations. Okay, so to set up the shower we just kind of ditch these cushions. And then this is just a piece of plywood that we tilt up. So there is the utility sink. And then we just bought a cheap little shower curtain. And I just kind of go around and hook it in. So then, um, the, there's like a hose here. So we've just got a little shower hose. And we put like a little mesh bag hang. So it just sits in there. Soap up, turn the water on, turn it off, um, and it's actually deep enough. Um, I'm short, Mike is short, so we still have plenty of headroom. Um, it's just not a lot of moving around room once you're in there. It's it's a quick shower space. It's nothing luxurious. And then just in the extra room is where I threw all the soaps and the laundry detergent. Um, if we really needed to, we could do laundry in this tub too. The shower curtain actually keeps in all the water. We've really never had... Uh water leak out from it. We bought a, a longer shower curtain so we could overlap the edges. Yeah, so it's extra um, wide. So once you get like to this part, it's doubled. Um, so you're gonna slide in and wrap yourself in there. And it, this again is just another trade-off. Uh, do we want a dedicated shower room? We see so many people in RVs that just throw all their stuff in the shower for storage. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, we didn't want to just have a whole shower room um, dedicated to showering, yeah. as silly as that sounds, we but that's what it came down to. We would have lost living space. Yeah, and we would have lost a closet, yeah. is what it came down Our to. Our bus is only... Oh, it's it's about 25 feet inside, yeah. and then the rest is like engine. So we needed to do oh, a lot of uh, multi-purpose. Uh, uh, so we kept the original ceiling in here, um, just because that was the easiest thing to do. Um, and we couldn't get ourselves to uh, take the ceiling down, um, you know, people that have done it, you'd have to take out all, all those screws and, or cut them out and then take out the insulation that's in there just to put new insulation in. So that's the main reason. We, we do have very good insulation. Well, maybe not very good, but just accepta <laughs> acceptable um, insulation in this ceiling as is. Uh, we wanted yeah. a roof access. A lot of people put fans there, which would be nice, but... I like to be able to get up on the roof. We have our kayaks up there and just to be able to check on the solar panels, it's nice 
to have somewhere inside to quickly jump up there instead of pulling out the ladder. The thing about the fans is you turn them on and it takes the hot air out, which is a great idea, but we have all these windows. And like we said before, once you open all the windows, it takes all the hot air out anyway. So I can see it. it's a very important thing for someone that doesn't have many windows in their rig. Uh, like a van or a, or a schoolie that um, got rid of all their windows or something like that, then I think you would definitely need one. But we have such good ventilation in this uh, in this bus as is. So. Yeah, kind yeah of we have a little ladder too, or like a little like uh, a pantry bit. ladder. Yeah, we don't we don't go up there very often, but um, it is nice to check on the panels every once in a while, clean them, clean, clean the panels, them. check the kayak straps. And... So the fridge is just a standard apartment size refrigerator that we got at Lowe's. Um, it draw, I put the power meter on it and it draws about 100 watts an hour when it's cycling. And it, of course the fridge doesn't cycle 24 seven. It only cycles, I don't know, maybe two thirds of the time or maybe even less. Um, so it's pulling 100 watts when it's running. And basically the, how we picked it was we went to Lowe's and tried to find the most uh, efficient refrigerator we could find in this size. We knew we wanted this small like apartment size refrigerator and it's been working great. And we, we put a strap on it just so it doesn't, you know, go across our whole living room area here. Just but, little uh, baby safety latches because the first yeah. couple of trips we had the door flying open and yep. beers flying everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, these little uh, baby uh, clasps are, are really, uh, really nice to get. And we found that if you buy things that aren't meant for an RV, they're less expensive. So if you buy like RV specific items, like an RV a specific latch, like more. you're gonna pay more. So we just try to try to buy like the generic, uh, the generic stuff that's meant for a house, and um, like this sink too. This is a house sink, obviously. Um, we got that at Habitat for Humanity for ten bucks. Um, and we tried to just get house stuff. And that's been the cheapest way to do it um, that we found. And so the, I, I said that it draws 100 watts an hour uh, when it's running, and that is our biggest energy draw of this whole bus. So we designed the solar system around that. Our battery bank is 675 amp hours total. It's six Trojan, uh, I think T105s they're called. They're meant for renewable energy. And um, then we have a 1500 watt inverter that, that would power all the outlets and the lights and everything is mostly 110 other than those three items. And I did that on purpose. I mean, I know it would have been more work to get that. I wanted to keep everything separate just because if we ever have any issues, we go to the mechanic and say, you know, these are our engine issues. This is what's going on. I didn't want them to say, well, it's because you did this and you, it's because of the, the house portion that I could say, no, the, the engine, the bus engine is totally separate from the house. Everything is separate. There's nothing really, other than grounds, I suppose, but everything else is separate and not connected at all. Yeah, we don't turn off the inverter at all. If we would get probably about three days of cloud cover, then I bet you we would have to shut the inverter down just because you don't want to drain your batteries past a certain point. Well, and the but, other thing you were regretting not doing for those circumstances is we have a car control panel in the bedroom, it would have been really nice to have the inverter on a switch inside yeah. the bus so you don't have to get out, climb in the garage. It was like 30 bucks more for the switch and I didn't do it. No, I kind of wish I would have because yeah. we, we did hit a lot of cloud cover um, early on in our trip and I wasn't comfortable with like the battery cycle yet. So I was shutting off the inverter at night. We were getting such cold temps, the fridge held its temperature just fine for like the eight hours. But then I, once we got south and we're getting all this sun, it's it's not even a problem. It didn't take our, our batteries down at all really anymore. We have so mm -hmm. much battery power and, and the 600 watts of solar powers everything. Yeah, and the best part about Trojan is there's a five year warranty on them. So they tell mm -hmm. you to keep the receipt, the original receipt, and you can go to any Trojan dealer and as long as they find fault in the battery, um, they'll replace them five years, so. That says a lot about their battery. For them yeah. to offer a warranty like that, a five-year warranty on a battery, that's pretty darn good. You pay a premium for them, but the pay a premium for the warranty. Keeps this house, you know, running really. Mm -hmm. you know, if without batteries, we lose a lot. So our other big thing was that we wanted like separate living area and sleeping area. So back here, um, on this side, is our toilet closet. Um, we have the Nature's Head composting toilet, and we love it. Um, it gets a little gross when you have to clean it out, but it's not that big of a deal. That's Mike's job. 
And then this side is our pantry. Um, we just have shelves all the way up. We use a lot of um, tension rods to keep things in place. Quarter inch pine. We Three quarter inch pine. And I just, I took a day to put up a whole bunch of gray stain on it. And then I did a whitewash and it didn't turn out the way we had imagined it, but I like it. I like the blue. So every door is on these little latches, um, which keeps things from flying open if we forget on the road. Uh, this is our closet. We just have another closet, tension rod, shoe racks. Most of the closet is for me, um, but it, it works again. Not pretty, but functional. We didn't cover any windows. Like yeah, the closet, the, like the pantry and the closet. Otherwise, we kept every window just to let light in, and That's we sprayed um, like the like Fog. bathroom fogging. So on the bathroom, the toilet closet window, these windows. Um, and then we have another closet here, and just shelves. We keep all of our stuff in those canvas baskets and just keep all our folded stuff in there, towels, things we need to take away. And then during the build, I asked Michael to build me drawers and he said, no way. So I took it upon myself to make some drawers. So down here, um, there's little drawers just to use up all the storage space possible. One on this side too, and this side on a slider. So that looks good. Good use well, of space. Well, because the bathroom and the closet is raised up due to the wheel well, so then you have all this space like around the wheel well, and yeah. that's what that's mm. uh, maximizing that space. Around yeah. The wheel well. I don't know where I would put that stuff if we didn't have those, so I'm glad that we have drawers. Yeah. This is like our bed cubby. We just kind of hop up in there. Underneath um, is our water gallons. So we have two 50 gallon um, drums for water. 55. 55 gallon drums for water. Total. Um, they came from the Habitat Restore. They were like the alcohol fluid that you put through soda machines and they were selling them for like 10 bucks each I think. So we grabbed two of those. Mike did some crafty plumbing and uh, we've got our water pump down there. Two water tanks on each side and just extra storage. Um, laundry, ugly stuff that we don't want out in the open. Extra water tank for drinking water. And that's just on a hinge and a little latch. And then our bedroom is pretty small, um, but we're small people. So we have a full size bed. It's just a foam um, we ordered off Amazon, I think. We order everything off Amazon. And then we kept the windows in there. The only difference with the windows in the bedroom is that Michael built screens. So there's screens screwed on to the outside just so we get some airflow. It gets really hot in there because it's so enclosed. And then we have a fan up there too. And then two little lights that we have on dimmers that we really never turn on. It works, it's functioning. So now we've seen the inside and we're gonna go check out the garage now. So this is the side of our bus. It's the storage area in the back of our bus. And uh, right now we're looking through the side door of it. These are the things that we use every night or every place that we go camping. So our chairs, our water hose, our 30 amp uh, electrical cord, our rugs. These are things that we use um, frequently. And in the back, we have a motorcycle rack blocking the rear door. So that part of the storage is things that we use less frequently because the motorcycle is of course blocking that door. So to access that back door, we'd have to move the motorcycle down. The motorcycle is really important to us um, because that saves us from having to tow a car behind the bus. And it, it saves us so much in uh, maneuverability um, especially our bus being a short wheelbase bus. We're very maneuverable. We don't really have to plan ahead anywhere we go. We, really, it's just like the, the elevation, the big bumps and that kind of thing uh, that we have to look out for. It's not the tight parking lots because this can handle it no problem with the 12 foot wheelbase. Bike is just nice to have because we don't have to pack up the bus to get somewhere. It's just a good little kind of excursion vehicle for us. We like to take it out just for fun sometimes or if we need to go get a couple of groceries, then we can just quick hop on the bike and go. We don't have to worry about taking the bus into cities. The bike is nice and yep. small. Just Beautiful. yesterday we used it to go get a, a case, case of beer. Of beer. <laughs> yeah, sometimes we put like a milk crate on the back. I just use the straps just to put a milk crate on the back and, or a backpack works just fine too. Yeah. And just we just need usually just a few things like uh, just a very short grocery run. Mm -hmm. It's very convenient for that. And it's also very convenient for hiking too. So like if we wanted to hike a mountain range up in the distance, we can hop on the bike and get our gear and, and go scoot over there without tearing camp. The bike itself, yeah, it only goes about 55. 
five miles. Yeah, so we don't go on major highways with it. Not that I want to be on major highways with a bike anyways. Um, but yeah, we just kind of take it slow. I don't have anything to drive ever, which kind of bothers me, but I don't drive the bus. I haven't yet. I'm sure if I really wanted to, I would have an easy time, or not an easy time, but an okay time. But I'm too short to ride the bike, so I don't ever get to drive. I mean, in the garage is just where we wanted everything that we didn't want to create space for inside. So all the ugly stuff like the propane tanks and the batteries and all the electrical and hot water heater. Yeah, this is one of two water tanks. We don't have like gauges on any of these tanks, it's, so it's just visual. It's all by sight, so you can see we're almost full. And that's, a, that's probably about 100 gallons right there. Both of them are like that. And they're linked together, so they would both have the same level. And this is just the, the fill hose from the other side. Uh, it's, it's just RV. It's a lot of it, this is like RV material, uh, the RV fill hose. And it's, also, it's done two ways. Uh, you can gravity fill it, or you can connect direct uh, to the city water. Um, just like an RV. So we have a little on-demand hot water heater back there. Yeah, the only downfall with that is I didn't permanently vent it. Yeah. So every time I take the vent out, I just shut the gas off to it. So it's kind of a two-step process. But basically all I do is drop that window and uh, put in a, uh, a metal, a piece of metal flashing here. And then I put the, the vent tube through it. And that fits perfectly in the bus window. I guess I could probably drive with it like that, but... I haven't. I just take no, it down every take time. It down every time. And uh, we like to stay in one spot for you know, at least a few days, so it's not really a big deal for me to do that. Yeah, we didn't want to drill a hole in the side of the bus. I know a lot of people just put a hole, but that makes yes. me nervous. <laughs> well, what I would have to do is I'd have to take out that school bus window and put in just a sheet of metal mm -hmm. and repaint it. It's just another job. You know? Yeah. This has been working fine. Alright, so this is the electrical part of the bus. Um, underneath all this storage is our six uh, Trojan batteries. And from there, it feeds into the, uh, the inverter. And then from the inverter, it goes into this automatic transfer switch. And this transfer switch is fed uh, two ways, once from the inverter and the batteries, and also from shore power. So that shore power goes into the transfer switch, the battery power goes into the transfer switch, and it defaults on shore power. So as long as we're plugged into shore power, that's where our power comes from. If we disconnect from shore power, there's a 20 second delay, and it'll switch over to battery power. And then it takes whatever power um, it has, and it goes into the AC distribution box. And then from the AC distribution box, it goes to the outlets and the lights and everything else. And then on the 12 volt side, we have the three things that run off 12 volt. It's uh, the furnace, toilet fan, and the water pump. Those are all out of here. Um, so that's the 12 volt side. It's very easy, very basic. Um, it, that just goes to the batteries then. Um, and then the charging. Uh, we charge our batteries two different ways. One way through solar. So the solar panels on the roof come down and hook into this charge controller, solar charge controller. It's an MPPT charge controller. And then that sends a charge to the batteries. The other way is the one we're connected into shore power. The uh, shore power battery charger is connected into this transfer switch. Now the main thing that you want to look out for with something like this is you don't want that smart battery charger being powered um, unless you're connected to shore power. Otherwise, you can create a, a dangerous loop. Not really dangerous, but just like a, a battery sucking loop. If this battery charger is being powered off the batteries and then charging the batteries, you're going to create a really nasty cycle there that you want to avoid. And the, this transfer uh, switch avoids that because there's actually a specific spot in that transfer switch meant for you to install a battery charger and wire a battery charger and you can get those transfer switches pre-wired but it's like i want to say it's like three times the price of a, an unwired one um i wish they would just do them all pre-wired but i actually uh for the transfer switch itself i had an electrician friend help me with it 
but that's the basic uh, system. That's how it works. I think they're all pretty. Uh, they work well together. Um, I haven't had any issues at all. It's it's all battery voltage. You know, it's they don't know that they're different manufacturers. So this is our water fill and our water hookup. This is our 30 amp uh, shore power connection, and this is a vent for our uh, flooded Trojan battery. So down here is our gray water tank. It's about a 40 gallon uh, gray water tank, and we just plumbed it in right here with just a regular uh, ball valve, I think that is. And then we connect the uh, just a regular garden hose, uh, a three quarter inch garden hose, and just put that down in the sewer and open the valve up and drain the gray water that way. We're very careful about putting the strainer in the sink so no hair and no food get down into that gray water tank. So thanks for watching and checking out Free Roaming Bus. Um, you can get to our Instagram at Free Roaming Bus or I'm working on a blog, freeroamingbus.wordpress.com. Um, on that blog, we have a products that we use page with a link to all of our Amazon affiliates links. Um, any little purchase through those links helps us out. All the information will be in the description below.